Good morning, Sodom and Gomorrah. Good morning, Sinner. Everybody, welcome to another Crypto Degenerates in a brand new year, 2021. Uh, much like changing into a pair of silken underpants after six months of using a burlap potato sack. It's the same one as your underpants. Uh, we start this new year. Uh, people in crypto, very happy so far, well, some of them. Um, how are you doing tonight, Darko? Doing in fucking insane in my membrane. What a start to 2021. Who would have thought we would be in the position that we find ourselves in the crypto space in? How are you doing, Rob? Which position is that? Doggy style. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> ah, well, yeah, I, you know, I, I guess some people did. Um, they were kind of drowned out by the, uh, other people who were uh, you know, making more outlandish predictions and, and people get so tired of them that they don't want to listen to any of them um but uh yeah there, there are some people who said this is what would would eventually happen um and uh, you know it's not been a disappointment so far we've had a couple of times so far in this rally where things started pegging back a little bit uh, and then you walk away wait uh, wait an hour <laughs> and the buying came comes in again from someplace and just starts knocking it back up. So there's been a lot for people to watch after, uh, you know, obviously the, the, the uh, 2020 did end in this way, but most of the year there was nothing happening. Uh, so if you had to call the whole year, you leave out the last month and you say that it was a pretty boring year for crypto. Um, yeah, this, this first month in 2021 is sure exciting, if nothing else. Oh, yeah, I'm hearing about erections all over crypto Twitter and many females nipples have gone hard to the point where they need biting just to sustain their emotions right now. But there's a lot of FOMO, a lot of hype. There's a lot of mainstream media now start, just now starting to write once again about Bitcoin. They all stopped after the last bull run back in 2017. And now I'm starting to see that there's all these mainstream media outlets now reporting on Bitcoin on a daily basis all of a sudden. So you know what that means? It's going to be a lot more attention. A lot of the people who sold off back in the last bull run, who didn't buy back in, will see these new mainstream media news articles. They're going to think, oh yeah, I've done it before. I can do it again. I'll jump back in. Institutions will take notice as well. It's, this is going to be one crazy roller coaster year. When I say roller coaster, I mean more ups than downs. The way it's looking, unbelievable. Well, yeah, no, it seems that way. Yeah, Darko, you don't need to single the women out. Uh, women can get erections too. Uh, and it's, they're just it's smaller and maybe you know most people don't recognize it as such but it, it's happening and, and essentially it is all the same you know it's just dimorphized so um is that, you know. is that the hem hermaphrodites is that what they call them no 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 that's that's every woman every woman uh, that the process uh, just manifests itself a little differently but they, they, they get them they just you don't see it but they get them mm. yeah and if you really 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 want to see them you're going to start from the top the lips, mid down the neck, behind the ear a little bit, play with their hair, just, you know, a little hmm. bit, little bit, not too much, not too little, down the chest, towards the nipple area, they love that shit, especially if you've got ice cubes handy. Then once they're fully erect, that's when you make your way downstairs, and that's enough, we're gonna get, we're gonna get cut off the show, man, we're gonna get kicked off the show. Yeah, what do you call this, a Barry White song? Holy shit. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, yeah, no shortage of things on topic to talk about. Uh, starting out this year already just this week like 18 things have happened we had to actually sort through these articles and figure out what we weren't going to read which is usually the yeah. opposite of the process which is scraping through the bowels of the cryptosphere looking for something that's worth discussing um, now it's a matter of uh, well we don't have time for all of this what are we gonna leave out and that's something else that that says a lot right there ain't that the truth cuz every week before we start these premieres me and Rob are like, we don't have anything to fucking talk about tonight. But first show of the year, and it's the complete opposite. We have so much to go through. Yeah. And we're taking our time starting to get into all this information for reasons we don't even know why yet. Mm. But, <laughs> mm. 
But, uh, oh, that's an awesome mug, dude. Yes. That's, that's, that's better than my Garfield one. Yes, it is. Groku oh. beats Gar Garfield every time. The Battle of the G's. I can tell you who's going to come out on top. <coughs> Just last night, we did on Crypto Tonight stream a weird news article where some dude had pain and itchy ears and he went to the doctors and he got checked out and they looked into his ears and they saw these little mushroom things ar growing around his eardrums. And the reason for it was because that dickhead was sharing his cotton buds with people. <laughs> what, do you mean share, what do you mean sharing them with people? Reusing them and sharing them with people. Okay, that's fucked up. And, and he got this infection in his ears that looked like little mushrooms were growing around his eardrums. Deep, man. That shit's deep. That's fucked. Yeah, that, that is terrible. Ears. That's what the ears reminded me of your mug just then. It's, I just remember that story just then. It was on last night's Crypto Tonight with new segment. Yes. The child. Groku. Can I ask you okay. a question, Rob? Gro 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 Groku versus Garfield. Okay. Groku can move shit with his hands, summon Jedi, and fucking do all this kind of shit, and he can't even talk. Okay. What can Garfield do? Knock over a trash can? Yeah. Eat I wonder lasagna. who's going to win. Eat lasagna. But, Rob, if you could hold up that mug one more time, I've got a question to ask you. Oh. Does that green person remind you of anyone? That green person you're, you're, you're a with. charming yeah, okay. All right. We're, we're gonna go right into our uh, into our news stories for tonight <laughs> and blow right past that suggestion of Darko's that we yeah. talk about something else. <laughs> Hello out there, wherever you are. So this week, where shall we begin? Uh, big news today. I know where I'm going to begin. U.S. federal regulator says that banks can conduct payments using stable coins. Um, this contrary to a lot of people, a lot of them respected uh, in the crypto sphere, uh, suggesting and in many cases outright saying that stable coins would be next to feel the wrath uh, of the SEC and they were going to shut this down, shut that down, everything else. Uh, literally days later, uh, the largest regulator of the relevant sector in, in the financial world has come out and said, ah, well, actually, no, um, we think it's fine that banks use public blockchain stable coins for um, settlement purposes similar to SWIFT and, and the other uh, more traditional financial networks that they're already using. That's big fucking news. Well, they had no choice, really, because just last year, we also reported on the Kraken Exchange launching its own first crypto bank in the US. So right now, they had no choice but to approve this. Otherwise, they'd fall behind more crypto exchanges opening up. Yeah. So it's a surprise, but it's not a surprise at the same time it, it is a surprise and the, and the timing is a, a little interesting now i always mm. try to take a look at timing uh, coming right on the heels of the move against xrp um it kind of makes you feel like that was on the to-do list before they did this uh, and we know that these these agencies do coordinate at the high level uh, and i feel like they said okay let's get this little bit of housekeeping out of the way and then we can make this announcement so this is the thing right <clears throat> you mentioned xrp and the banks and what made XRP become so huge? All their partnerships with all these international banks, banks who don't use XRP. So what are these, all these partnerships with international banks about? Yeah. Oh. Huh? Fraudulent, it, fraudulent. It, here, now, um, the, what this, what this uh, announcement has said is that uh, these uh, banks can use public blockchain stable coins any of them for x ripples business model that's that's what i'm trying to think of the right way to say it but uh, you know essentially this was their business model this is what they were looking to slide in and do uh and they're saying now that well you know actually they don't need you they're not going to need your special sauce we're not getting in bed with you and they can use any of these stable coins actually now that you mentioned yep. it now ripple wasn't a stable coin but they were still suggesting it for use as <laughs> settlement over borders etc hey before the crash before they crashed they were performing like a stable coin for three years. Yeah. Yeah. And that was part of their argument. Um, and I, I guess recent events give the lie to that argument. You may function like a stable coin forever, uh, but if you're not a stable coin, 
market conditions can catch up to you. In this case, the market conditions were some very bad news for the company Ripple, and look what it did to the price of XRP. And it doesn't matter what the long term is, we're talking the short term. If they were in place as a settlement system uh, for anybody, yeah, if, the chaos, if. can you imagine the chaos that would have ensued following this crash? Yeah. Um, so it would be irresponsible to ever, um, you know, suggest that people use uh, a, a non-pegged, you know, pegged to something, a non-pegged currency to settle debts in another that's being measured in another currency. If the whole world moved to Bitcoin, we could say use Bitcoin as the settlement network. OK, but unless the whole world is on Bitcoin, you really can't because it's also a speculative asset. The two don't go hand in hand. So, uh, again, uh, it was always one of the things that I looked at with Ripple and people had their criticisms. I have the things that I personally didn't like that would prevent me from getting involved. That was always one of them. And I didn't see XRP as a suitable medium for what they said they were trying to do. Um, but stable coins are a suitable medium for settling debts in the real world, which is pegged to a different uh, measure of value than cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency right now, we sort of measure everything against Bitcoin. In the real world, everything's measured against the dollar right now. That's just what it is. Uh, so in operating in that world and saying we want to have some sort of crossover, this is the place that you would find it. Nobody thought they would go for it because, we, you know, it's still a cryptocurrency. They're still not in control of it. And it's still, in, in that sense, represents a threat to them. But I think they've come to realize that from their worldview, uh, embracing the stable coins would be the lesser of the evils for them, because at least the stable coin is still tied to something that they are in control of, and that's the dollar. Um, yeah. So it, it, it does retain a little bit of their of their sort of presence and importance in that ecosystem. I can see somebody who saw the future and saw that, that cryptocurrency was inevitable. They might say, guys, this is the best deal we're going to get. So maybe we'll get behind this because this keeps us in the driver's seat to some extent. Mm. And even with stable coins, there's still no permanent guarantee either. Even stable coins can break. It's as That's good as the, the mechanism, thing. exactly. But yeah. you know what? The dollar can go up or down and they can print more. So you can put yeah. certain risks into certain categories. There's nothing in Bitcoin that's meant to have it functioning at the same value day over day. And that's the problem. There's no corrective mechanisms whatsoever. It's designed like that. So it doesn't work. Um, nobody's saying something has to be bulletproof to use it. The credit card networks are bulletproof. Proof, they can go down. They have. I've been in stores and we can't take your card. So is it perfect? No. But does it work? Yes. The stable coin model would absolutely fit every need that they have. Um, and, and frankly, the problems that would that could plague a stable coin fall in the bucket of, of just problems that could happen to anything, really. I mean, you know, the dollar crash is now what? There's really no way to build any protection uh, against that into a system like this. If you're settling debts on the crashed value, what are you going to do? That's just what it is. Speaking of mechanisms, gambling tech giant, this is some, some breaking news actually. Gambling tech giant IGT patents its way to fund bets with Bitcoin. So they're bringing Bitcoin and ETH to slot machines near you soon. Oh. Mm. Well, they always said that. that I've, always, I've heard that in, uh, in, in crypto investing is gambling. So now they just let's go the full Monty, right? Whole hog. Now here's your gambling yes. machine and just put your, your Bitcoin in and see if you can get more out. <laughs> yeah. So the way the way it's going to work is you'll be able to transfer your, your Bitcoin and ETH to your gambling account. And mm. then from that, from there, they're going to convert that, of course, into fiat to finalize the payment. So you're not technically gambling bitcoin but mm. you're using bitcoin to gamble so yeah they've put a pattern on this for slot machines and other gambling activities for casinos which this company provides they provide slot machines and other technology for casinos and they now got the pattern they're going to start integrating bitcoin bitcoin cash and eth in, into its up-and-coming te gambling technology oh. for the casinos 
coming soon to a mm. reservation near you. Uh, I don't know how things are <laughs> in, 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 your, uh, <laughs> in the United States. That's part of what we have. Um, you know, Ouch. the the, uh, the American Indians kind of got the shaft from history, and and one of the things that's been given back to them to sort of make up for it is the exclusive right to operate casinos in a lot of jurisdictions. So um, mm. a lot of the gambling uh, gambling in this country is either run by the government, the mob or the American Indian. It's one of the three, really nobody else. Um, and uh, so they have a pretty large share of that. Uh, so they'll be happy to get those machines, I'm sure. Um, as a, uh, it always, it seems like, uh, you don't like to paint everybody with the same brush, but uh, they do form a community of sorts. As a community, have always sort of seemed willing to embrace new things, and, and you know you do see them. I, I remember reading um, one of the one of the reservations around here was one of the very, like back before high speed internet was a thing. They were already investing in it, getting high speed internet run to the to the reservation. Um, you know, and just in front of the curve and not behind it. So this might be something that they say, yeah, we're, we're willing to give it a try. I personally don't gamble. Uh, I, I know people that do, and they're always surprised to hear I don't when they hear my other, my attitude towards risk. I'm not anti-risk at all. Um, but, uh, you know, I like to be in it, sort of in the driver's seat on that risk. I don't I just like to leave it all to luck. So I, I don't well, gamble. But I, I see yeah, the well, appeal, and a lot of people do. A hundred dollars on a slot machine will last you what two minutes, whereas a hundred dollars in crypto could last you a few years. Yeah, it could also last you two minutes. I have met some people who it would, um, but yes, uh, to me, exactly. At least you have a fighting chance. And if you want to do a little bit of research and take your time and be smart, then there may be opportunities. Opportunities are different than dumb luck. And you know, uh, it, it, yes, people get dumb luck in crypto. They get dumb luck anywhere, uh, but it's not all dumb luck. Gambling is all dumb luck, but it's worse than that. And I always had a problem with the whole thing that, you know, I, I'm not going to, I, I, people can do whatever they want. They can offer whatever the kind of service they want. I'm not necessarily going to use it. I don't like where uh, going in where the odds are stacked against me. And if I, for example, use my brain uh, to get around your game and, and all of a sudden this is a problem for you. Okay. Mm. Uh, and so fuck you then. You know, I, I don't like the way if somebody starts winning too much, well, they, you, you're going to have to leave, sir. Uh, oh, really? So it's fine if they're losing too much, but it's just like the uh, the exchanges, all of the financial markets, they'll let something crash to zero, but if it starts taking off too high, wow, we got to keep kicking the circuit breaker and stop this. We're going to have we're going to have real people getting rich out there, and then they're not yeah. going to have to work for us. We can't have that. We can't have them get rich. Dude, it happened just a few days ago. There was mass amounts of people trying to withdraw, cash out their cryptos, Bitcoin and ETH, and there were several exchanges that crashed and delayed processing of payments. Yeah. But speaking of dumb luck as well, what did the cannibal do after he dumped his girlfriend? What? He wiped his ass. Oh, God. Oh, God. My God. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair, that that's more than just a cannibal. That's a cannibal and a murderer. But in any case, ah, uh, moving right along. You know, I just I don't understand. Well, well, these people that are in favor of uh, oh, you know, my uh, our good government friends and the financial system. You know, the people that that like like the way things are set up and regulated, and then they and they just uh, they have no problem with people being poor, but a big problem with people being rich, and everything is stacked out to make sure that that outcome is always the one that comes out. And nobody has a problem with that. Well, none of these people do. Uh, that doesn't bother you at all. And, and you're happy participating in a system that's designed to make sure you don't get ahead. Designed from the ground up. And you're going to defend that system. I mean, it's, it's mind-blowing to me. That's because if people get rich and they stop working, the economy stops. They need people to stay poor, to live week to week, day by day, so they keep their jobs, they keep paying their income taxes. Otherwise, if everybody's rich, no one would work. Okay, Dude. good. The maintenance of society is not my problem. Okay, that's so I don't want I to agree. participate in a system that's stacked against me. Period. I agree. Yeah. 
I Glad we agree. agree. All right, we both agree. What a fucking surprise. Um, hey, so you like thirty thousand dollar Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Darko? I usually stay away from these wild eye predictions, but we'll make an exception in this case only because of who it's coming from, and and they're not making the predictions so much as just talking about it. Uh, J.P. Morgan has said that they're looking at uh, valuation uh, against gold and other assets, and Bitcoin attaining a similar level of popularity. And they estimate, after apparently an intensive study, that Bitcoin's market capitalization uh, of $575 billion would have to rise by 4.6 times uh, for a theoretical Bitcoin price of $146,000 per Bitcoin to match the total private sector investment in gold via exchange-traded funds or bars and coins. Now, that's, that's, you know, the gold is a metal market, both, you know, uh, representative, so the certificates and the things that people trade and whatever, and physical real-world gold. To match all of that would mean $146,000. Uh, dollar Bitcoin. And that's coming from J.P. Morgan. Uh, nice history of not liking Bitcoin too much. Uh, the CEO, Jamie Dimon, has come out many times. Ah, you, you know, you rat bastards over there in crypto trying to eat my lunch. Um, so, you know, they, they're, they're not trying to help, uh, but they are saying that this is... That now, they go on to say that they do believe that some of this is driven by speculation mania. Um, however, uh, if... That speculation leads Bitcoin to match or overtake gold. The result is still the result. I don't care why it is, but if more people want it, the demand, everything's working as function. The demand pushes the price up. Um, so not too crazy. What a lot of people don't realize is that Bitcoin rallied by 300% up until $29,000 during 2020. During 2020, it rallied 300% till $29,000. So these figures do not come as a surprise. The cryptocurrency has gained over 160% in the last three months alone. Mm -hmm. A lot of people forget these numbers. They forget. But yeah, they also go forth to state that a fifty dollars to $60,000 Bitcoin in the near future would not be sustainable, which I partially agree with. And just yesterday, last night, even BitBoy Crypto came out, slightly relevant, slight, slightly relevant, slightly irrelevant. But BitBoy Crypto came out with a prediction of a comfortable prediction, a confident prediction of a $27,000 ETH by October this year. Did you hear about that one? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, uh, listen, not outside of the realm of possibility. Uh, maybe a year ago, some people would have said that's totally fantastic. I, I think that right now, Looking at the way things are moving, it's been pretty rapid, um, and uh, in, interestingly, un, seemingly unstoppable. Every time things get knocked back, we see them pushing back the other way, and this has been going on for a few weeks now. Um, you know, you typically something like this doesn't just last a few weeks, so it doesn't seem like we're at the end of it. Uh, and you add to it all of the additional signs of of enthusiasm. Uh, not to mention institutional enthusiasm. I mean, some of these, some of these transactions that are happening right now are huge, and the, the people that are making them are following them up by taking those bitcoins effectively out of circulation. So that's something new that we're seeing. We're seeing large transactions, and then those transactions are not resulting in bitcoin staying where they are for sale in a week or a month, but they're coming off the fucking not off the chain, but they're coming off of the uh, sort of yeah the public areas of the Bitcoin and into somebody's private wallet where it's yep. most likely, if you play the odds, going to sit. And when somebody does that, it's a good indication they're going to hold it for a little while. That's what's happening after these large transactions. They're moving out to oh, private yeah. wallets. Oh, definitely. There's, there's been record numbers lately of people withdrawing their Bitcoin off these set exchanges. Also in the news, in the last 12 hours, a DeFi coin, a DeFi token, made the news they rose to a new all-time high of 123 dollars 124 dollars right reason why this is relevant is because this time last year when they launched it it started off at two dollars and exactly one year later it's 124 dollars just another example of anything can happen in crypto and sure it does well from absolutely from two to, 
from $2 to 124 in 12 months. That is fucking insane, dude. And maybe this is a good time to bring up uh, something that I, I kind of wanted to discuss tonight, which is, especially for the potential, uh, uh, far-fetched as it may be, that we, there are some new users and we might see some new viewers find us and say, oh, well, I'm going to learn a little bit about this, but um, maybe they'll be fortunate enough to, to walk past our show in a, in a shop window someplace and see it and say, oh, I'm going to watch that. Those look like some fine, upstanding gentlemen. And uh, yeah! I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to learn about cryptocurrency. <laughs> and, and and so what, you made a funny. Uh, you made a funny. So what, what are we what are we not hear? We're hearing stuff, a lot of stuff like that now. And those stories are true. And. It, therein lies a lot of the appeal of investing in cryptocurrency. Uh, okay, I can do uh, $2 to $125. Let me do some scaling on that. Yeah, that looks nice. Okay, people like that. Well, let's not forget the losers, okay, first of all, and say it's not everybody, every story is going to end quite in that way. Uh, and th we need to see, or, or we need maybe a, 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 as people doing a show, uh, and, and others that do shows maybe talk about more the importance of maintaining a difference between investment money, money that you use to live, money that you're going to not consider investment money, but something else. And what's the third category? Okay. The third category, I, I guess the best way to describe it would be passion money. And it's okay to be passionate about something. But one of the other things that we see in cryptocurrency is people buying a dog and holding on to it for dear life, even though it's clear that that dog ain't gonna, you know, that dog ain't getting up again. That dog is on the ground, its tongue is lying out of its mouth, and one of its eyeballs rolled across the floor. At what point are you going to say, you know, this was not a good investment? And that's why I, you know, the way I would say it to people is, if you have a project that you're passionate about, take that money out of your investment budgeting. Okay, now, don't consider that to be investment money. It isn't. Investment money is money that you put into an asset that you've determined has a reasonable chance for real world reasons of increasing the value of that asset. That's an investment. Passion money goes into something that you say, I would like to see this project succeed I don't need this money to make money for me. I don't need this money to live on. I don't need this money for anything else. And if that's truly the case, then by all means, go throw it into a dog and hold it in the hopes that one day they're going to blossom, to try and help them blossom, to keep that money in their cap so that, you know, it, it props it up. That's fine, but don't call that an investment. And too many people call that an investment. They, I'm invested in that. You're not invested in it. You have a hope and a prayer, little more, and you just, that, it, 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 historically, your property has done nothing. You have no reason to believe it will be otherwise, and yet you remain invested in it. That's not an investment. That's that's your been, passion. That's your hobby. Yeah. I've been preaching the same shit lately, very lately, on the Crypto Tonight shows. And what I've been telling people is, when when we say only invest what you can afford to lose what this means is you're in investing money you're allocating money to a certain asset and once it's there you need to psychologically train yourself it's already gone you've mm -hmm. already lost it but if you've invested into a utility token or a coin and you're freaking out with every price change and you're losing sleep over it, what this means is you've put too much. You've put in more than you can afford to yep. lose. Absolutely. So you need to decide, how much can I throw at the window right now? How much money can I throw at the window? Because whatever I can afford to throw at the window, that's what I'm going to use to invest with. Yep. Once it's invested, I've got to treat it like I lost it. And if you if you dig the whole crypto cryptocurrency thing, and I do know some people who keep most of their money in cryptocurrency, okay, uh, more than a few. Some of them are smart about it, and some of them aren't. And the ones that, in my view, are smart about it are the ones where a great portion of their holdings are stable coins. And the reason being is that's the money they use to live. That's taking the the place of their bank account. And when they go back the next day to get their money, it's the same as the day before when they put it in. And for that money, for that, you know, toilet paper money, the, the money that you, you know, your cigarette money, whatever it is that floats your boat, 
for that money, the best thing that it can do is maintain parity with whatever the standard of exchange is in the society that you live in. Now, if, that's a, if that standard of exchange changes, well, then you can move on to that. It hasn't happened yet. Right now, the standard of exchange in, in, in most societies that, that cryptocurrency is in use in is fiat, the f based somewhere probably on the dollar. But if the, even if it's the country's own fiat, that's fine. That's the number that's important to you for things like toilet paper, cigarettes, mortgages, uh, you know, putting food on your table. And you can, by all means, you know, crypto is supposed to be an answer to having to use the banks. And I understand if somebody doesn't want to use the banks, but you don't hold all that in something like Bitcoin. You don't do it. Maybe a portion. And that's your investment money. That's different money from your living money. On that note, as mainstream media overflows with tales of how stimulus package recipients plan to invest stocks and consumer goods, notionally with the goal of stimulating the economy, those who bought Bitcoin with a previous cash gift in April 2020 are now sitting on $5,600. So at the time, the stimulus check was worth $1,200, twice the amount of the second round, meaning Bitcoin has supplied gains of 370% for those who invested their twelve hundred dollar check into Bitcoin back then, amazing. <laughs> well, they'll actually get some stimulus then. Oh, bro! If I had that stimulus check and I put in Bitcoin back then, and I turn that twelve hundred into fifty six hundred, I'd be very stimulated. Oh yeah, very yeah. Stimulated. And you know what? How many times do you really want to be that other guy who's standing there? patting themselves on the back about how safe all their decisions are and they do everything so safe and nice uh, but you can't help but feeling like a chump because you're getting nowhere with it and now you want to be that chump that took that twelve hundred dollars and did nothing with it or do you want to be the guy who's now sitting on five and and, and there's something sitting in between people need to get over their aversion to risk um, life comes with risks. I don't, I don't really know that there's any way to put lipstick on that pig. I'm not going to tell you that, well, there really is no danger. Risk does come with peril. Uh, and, and, you know, I understand that some people can't handle that, but that is to their detriment uh, in terms of real world outcomes. And so, you know, I, I think that probably one of the things, I know that one of the things we saw last time was people standing on the sidelines being like, this sucks. I wish I wasn't afraid to get wet. OK, now you can be sure it's happening again. So we might get some new entrants. And, and what's interesting is those new entrants, many of them, it's kind of like, you know, people that hold off on doing something for a long time and then do it. They actually end up being very into it once they do it. Otherwise, they wouldn't have been weighing it the whole time. So it's something they really want to do. So what's nice about that is you have the potential to get some really good adherence. You know, not just, oh, I, I want to buy today and sell tomorrow and I'm gone. Out of that set, uh, there, there are people in that group who were probably meant to be crypto people, but they're so fucking afraid because they've been trained to be. So many things, unfortunately, in our modern culture have been designed to make people live in a state of perpetual fear. And many of them give into it. So until they overcome that fear and they say, you know, I understand that I am at risk in this world uh, and that's part of living. Um, they're going to be on the sidelines. How high do you want to watch this number get? And then, you know, we could do this all day. And you're going to see people who got the same $1,200 as you. And right now, they're not worried about putting food on the table. And you are. And you told yourself you were safer. Well, how did that work out? Were you really safer? Well, the reason this, is, this goes back to what we discussed earlier tonight. The reason why they have this fear is because they're investing more than they can afford to lose. Right. And saying that once you once someone invests allocates a set amount of funds that that they can afford to lose a set of funds is that once they've invested they can sleep at night they don't need to check the price because they don't care because they right. told themselves it's gone already right. is another prime example of when you expect nothing you get everything mm -hmm. all right so, yeah, people need to stop over-investing, stop putting everything in one bag. Well, because, uh, stop conflating investing with gambling. Um, 
Yeah, if if, if somebody good. that's really investing, and because here's the counter argument, somebody might say, well, I, I don't have, I can't afford to part with that $1,200. Okay, can you afford to part with 50 cents? Now an investor, an investor will take the 50 cents that he can afford to part with, and he will go buy his five Satoshis with it. Okay, yeah. that's an investor. Uh, a gambler yes. is somebody who's going to take the whole whack that they can't afford to lose and go buy yep. as much Bitcoin as they can. If you don't see the yep. difference, I'm not sure that there's anything darker or I can do for you. Um, you know, an investor is going to continue at it. And somebody like that is never going to lose because of the reasons that Darko just gave. Each time they put money in, it was money that they already wiped their hands of, went like this and said, I, to the, to the wind, and I can do that with this amount of money. And even if it's 10 cents, you've given yourself that much more of a chance to see returns come back out the other side. Think about somebody who had been doing this for the last three years and then just putting 30 cents into Bitcoin. Uh, every week when they got their paycheck, 50 cents, whatever it is. Like they used to do the fucking feed the children shit. If you, if you, if you give 50 cents every day, these kids are going to keep starving because we're not going to give the money to them. But hey, if, if same same idea at work, right? If you put in 50 cents, what would they have now in that account? I'd love to do the math on 52 weeks in a year. I mean, it'd probably be about a, a thousand or so with all these recent increases just from a small commitment like that. I'll tell you what, I'll do the calculation now, but before I do that calculation, to everybody who's watching, what Rob just spoke about now is also called dollar cost averaging. If you don't know what that means, look it up. We're not financial advisors, but it's a very popular and highly recommended way of investing into something, not just crypto, but into anything. Well, there's a reason but for that, because it's a, it's a highly sensible way. It's actually investing as opposed to gambling. Yeah. So, yeah, DCA, dollar cost averaging is called. Now, Rob, you said 50 cents per day. There's 365 days in a year, so that would equate to $182.50 per year times that. Oh, but hang on. From what period are we talking about, though? You started in January. I mean, it would be a hard calculation because you're buying at different yeah. prices all across the, yeah, yeah. the range, yeah? Uh, but let's say, you know, uh, let's say Bitcoin was 3000 average during that time period. Okay, that you 3, were doing. Yeah. For how many years? One year, just one year. Well, uh, well, act like you did this in 2018. All right, All right. in 2019. 3, times ten. Yeah. Like fifty cents a day for one year, it would have been one hundred eighty-two dollars for that one year, and that would then be worth today eighteen hundred dollars. Oh. That's a nice return. It doesn't sound like much, but it's 1800 you wouldn't have from parting ways with 50 cents. $1,800 for putting 50 cents in a jar every day that added up to $100 by the end of the year. Uh, I'd say that's a fucking, most people would be happy. I think, you know, we're talking about a world where people will go looking for change in their couch. So you talk of those numbers to most people, they're going to be thrilled. They would absolutely do that if they thought it was easy. Now, now you got me thinking because I actually keep a cup of silver coins, because I hate sitting on my wallet when it's coins in it. So whenever I have loose change, silver coins, I'll put them in this big cup thing. Now I'm thinking, what if I had put all those coins into Bitcoin during yep. that period? Yep. Yep. Uh -huh. Well, and so here it is. You put the coins in the jar, they're worth the same as when you take them out. That type of storage mechanism is good for money that you need, money that you have to live with. And hence, you know, we just discussed if you don't like the banks and you don't like fiat, use the stable coins. That's fine. But for investments, it's not, you didn't invest in anything. You just put money you know in a jar. What, you know what it is though, Rob? People get lazy and I think 50 cents. Why would I go out of my way to deposit 50 cents? What's that going to get me? What's that going to get me? They oh, also need 800 help. 800 bucks, motherfucker. No, they, That's what it's going to get you. They also need help. They also need services that are going to make it easy to do something like that. Because what's the point of doing it? Uh, you can't buy 50 cents if your fees are going to be a dollar. Um, so I'm not being completely fair. Uh, you know, they, oh, they, that would it, be ETH. That, that would be ETH. But what about on-ramp on exchange for Bitcoin? Where they the average is one percent commission per tra per transaction. That's fine. Yeah, then right. it's, fe it's feasible then. Right. right. For right. ETH, I, I see what you're saying because right. ETH is a different story. Right. Uh, so yeah. you know there are obstacles. I get it. It's not, but that's easy for somebody to set up. Uh, for example, somebody like PayPal would be an addition. Uh, I mean that that's a little box you could check. 
and say, I have my PayPal balance and I, I commit to taking a quarter out of it every week. I can afford to do that. And then just have them do that in the background. And every week, you're going to have a quarter converted into into Bitcoin for you um, out of your out of your reserve. No, I, very few people are going to miss that quarter if they have a PayPal account. But now that money is going to begin to accrue and they can pull it out at any time that they feel like they need to. But they won't have that urgent need to sell if Bitcoin goes down for a little while. That's the other thing about investing in this way and, and, and the difference between a true investment and a gamble. A gambler is going to look at a flash crash and say, oh my God, I'm ruined. An investor is going to say, I need to wait for a sunny day again. This is a rainy day, and now I got, I'm just going to have to wait. And it all comes down to having the power to do that because that money doesn't is not in control of you. You were in control of that money. Now that we're talking about important stuff and informative stuff and slightly edu even educational stuff, dare I say, I just got an incoming transmission from our program engineer, Roland. With oh, Roland. Right. I make big poopy. I do good. I make yeah. big poopy. Talk about timing, yeah. We're onto a hot topic, informative, educational, you know, and, and he's interrupting with a fucking joke, even though we paid him to find jokes, but it's the timing of his execution that is a slightly annoying here, but I'll, I'll say it now, Roland, roll wait. Say so he's saying, how do you get retards out of a tree? How, Roland? What was, what was Roland doing in a tree? So how you get retards out of a tree is you wave to them. That's nice. That's nice. Good one, Roland. Yeah, good one, Roland. Uh, Roland, I, I would say uh, it's not nice to pick on people less fortunate than you, but I, I have a feeling many of these people are more fortunate than Roland. So uh, I think it's fair game. You know, and, uh, these guys uh, score off him all day. So why not the other way? Yeah. Uh, yeah so Mark Cuban in the news again saying he'll run for president i tell you i wish i had a nickel for every time this guy said he was going to run for president um yeah. i i wouldn't need to invest mark cuban says he'll run for president if bitcoin hits a million dollars so uh it, it, as per, he has some conditions he says i'll run if bitcoin gets to a million and we can get commitments he doesn't say from whom to donate 350 bitcoin to the treasury each of the four years so that we can give one satoshi to every citizen each year that they must hold for 10 years well that that's a hell of a plan uh and that was his tweet on tuesday uh this is not cuban's first time talking about running for president he seems to float the idea whenever he wants some attention um and now he's pulling into the uh bitcoin mania and trying to use that to get some attention uh if he's gonna do it i wish he would just do it i prefer more voices up there and i don't like political parties so you know I, i've i've long taken the view that it's gonna have to be people that with money that break this system and they may not be the people in every case that we would choose but if anybody's going to be able to do it uh, we had Ross Perot here in the 90s, and he showed what you can do with money. Um, he was ranking with both political parties uh, and, and had to be invited to the debates because his popularity was, was too big to exclude him. Um, that's all because of the money. The guy was a big dork, uh, but it, he had the money to throw at it. So yeah, I, I, it's exciting. I, I would love to see it. I, you know, don't like the guy all that much, uh, but uh, I, it, please. And instead, all he does is talk about under what conditions he might. I mean, it, it's absolutely maddening. Mark Cuban, on the off chance that you turn this show on, will you fucking cut the bullshit, okay? Shit or get off the pot. That's my spiel. That plan of giving everybody in the country one Satoshi sounds just like what you discussed earlier about 50 cents a day. Yeah, it does. I mean, I'm making fun of him because he's saying one Satoshi, but um, you know, yeah. Is it better than nothing? Yes. Uh, I, I, I kind of whinge at the forcing them to hold it 10 years. I don't like the idea of vestment personally. Um, it, it always kind of aggravated me to be involved with vested stuff. Um, you know, I, I like things to vest right away when I get them. Otherwise, to me, I don't have them. So if I can't pull that out, if I need it, 
it's like I don't have it. Maybe that's what he wants. This is forcing people to save. This is Social Security all over again. I mean, you know, people have different opinions about this. Do we force people to save for their old age so they don't come crying for help? I don't fucking know. I don't like forcing people to do anything, so I say no. Um, but I guess that would be sort of his answer. He doesn't say replace Social Security, which is interesting, but I, I have a feeling that's kind of what's on his mind uh, because that Ponzi scheme can't continue forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. Wow. Um, Roll just sent me another joke. <clears throat> Why do men like big tits and a tight ass? Because they've got big mouths and little dicks. Oh, that's nice. Well, one for the ladies, right? Yeah, one for the ladies. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. What else? What else? What else are you going to throw at uh, us here? I, You're going to keep doing I, this I to us? Yeah, I don't know what to do with him anymore, man. Uh. I don't know. I think we're just employing him out of sympathy right now, but yeah. You have sympathy for him? I have no sympathy for him. Uh, I, thought, I thought it was all based on sympathy, but... Uh, it, 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 you know, it's reached the point we, we get, with everything, our frustrations trying to get a day's work out of this guy. I have to say, if he was on fire, I wouldn't piss on him to fucking put him out. Uh, yeah, it, it's, it's gotten that bad. So, uh, it, hence rolling. But we, we continue to keep him on. Why? I don't know. Actually, I'll tell you why. Because Vacant Minds Media are a bunch of cheap bastards and they won't give us anybody else. They've told us flat out that they will not let us hire anybody else. So I don't know who the, I don't know who Roland's fucking rabbi is in this organization that they like him so much this is like a mr bean situation they just want to keep him around yeah. so we have no choice and that's really the reason why we still have him around if we're being honest isn't it darko we have no choice we have no choice <laughs> we have no choice <laughs> None. but uh rob I, i'm not sure if you've heard about some other breaking news but blockchain.com which is a fairly popular website right blockchain.com has announced they're going to stop trading XRP next week. Mm. That's big. Well, big, also big, big uh, uh, Grayscale drops XRP from their large cap crypto fund. Um, as we mentioned last, last week during the show, I mentioned that I saw that they had acquired some more. Interestingly, they haven't sold it. They, they claim they still have it, and they have it in a separate fund, uh, but they've just removed it from their index, yeah. I heard they actually sold it to accumulate more Bitcoin and Litecoin. That's well, what I heard. Well, let's see here. This was uh, January 5th. This was today. They're saying, they're claiming they still have, I don't know if it's all of it, but they still have it in a separate fund. They're just no longer holding it in their digital large cap fund, which is also make up okay. of Bitcoin and Ethereum. Okay. Graystale still operates a standalone XRP trust, but it stopped accepting, maybe that's what you heard, it stopped accepting new subscriptions to the fund. Um, existing investors will continue to receive annual reports, audited financial statements, and tax information statements. So, yeah, they're, 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 they're still doing something for the asset. They've just sort of, I guess, quarantined it, if you want to put it that way and taking it out of the large cap which was a you know uh, weather vane uh, the weather vane fund uh, i guess if you will tracking the hottest assets uh, obviously it's no longer considered to be uh, a hot asset by <laughs> by people that are looking at these things I, don't, I just don't understand how people can still be buying xrp right now with everything that's going on major exchanges delisting it court cases left right and center because there's another court case that's come up for Ripple. Yeah. And I, I did have it. Let me see if I still got it. Tetragon. Tetragon is suing Ripple as well. well they're buying it. That's a new one. They're buying it because it's a fire sale. That's why they're buying it. And, you know, these might not all be... It depends how they're buying it. Quite frankly, if this is somebody with a million dollars in the bank and they're spending 100000 on Ripple, okay, in the hopes and money that they don't need... And they say, you know what, give them five years. And if they're willing to wait five years for this shit to blow over and, and whatever, and, and they're saying the probability says, as we discussed last week, that the asset's not simply going to evaporate. It's not going to go away. The Ripple has options in this world. If they absolutely find it untenable to continue here in the States, 
uh, they can move, but they might not even. They might just pay off the SEC and move on. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of different ways that this could go, but I think that at least some of the people buying now are doing it with money that they say, you know what, I, when you see something like this that has been this big for this long, it's been number three, and you see it on a fire sale like this, you pick it up for a rainy day. You know, five years down the road, I'm willing to wait with that money. I don't need that money tomorrow. I don't fucking care. Let it dip all the way to a penny and then go climb its way back up. I'll wait through all of that. And if they're going to see, uh, you know, even on today's price, if they're going to see 50 cents in five years, they've doubled their money. Not too bad. Not too shabby for a rainy day thing. Bro, they're a fraudulent company. They have all these deals that don't even exist on the surface with international banks. They've, they've been dumping on their own investors between $1.3 billion and $2 billion on their own investors, which we've spoken about before. They've got legal problems left, right, and center. They're getting sued left, right, and center. They're still facing a court case started last year but from their own investors for the dumping. The fact that anybody that would think of accumulating right now makes me sick, makes me sick. I understand if they, they waited to one cent, then everything you just said would be 100% validated, 100%. But right now, at current prices, it still has so much more room to drop as f further major exchanges keep delisting this shit coin. And we've been calling it shit coin for a long time. So anybody who has the balls to buy right now has to reassess their life. It, the fact of anybody buying XRP right now makes me totally sick to my stomach, to my bladder, to my bowels, bro. I just can't have, I just feel like regurgitating, bro. Every time I think about it, every time I see it in the market, the price goes up 0.1%. I just feel this, this in my gut, man. It's just, I feel like chucking, like, I feel like chucking right now, just thinking about it. Like who would fucking buy this shit and, Well, there you have it. Um, it looks like uh, that was too much for Darko to swallow. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, in any case, people, we know why this is happening. Uh, when Darko gets back, we'll remind him. Uh, this is nothing new uh, to the cryptocurrency industry. We've seen this in the regular investment world. Company goes out of fire sale, somebody's going to be around to pick it up. And the truth is that once, once an asset is issued, it doesn't go away. And, uh, you know, it, it, they are uh, placing their bets on the fact that the people behind Ripple are not going to want to go away and are going to continue to want to do what they have been working on. If that's the case, well, maybe, maybe they'll see something back. I'm sure I don't know. I would, however, put it more into the category of gambling uh, than investing or, as we discussed earlier, uh, passion money. If, if you're passionate for whatever your reasons about XRP, then by all means, this is a great price considering where it's been. Uh, go ahead and pick some up and hold it in hopes that it will recover and you can be a part of helping it recover. But please, people, don't do that with money that you need. That's it. Hey, feeling better, Darko? He can't hear me yet. Feeling better, pussycat? I just barfed, man. Uh, yeah. Too much for you to take. I just... Yeah, it just makes me sick. XRP makes me sick. It's well, while you were doing it. that, I just put in a buy order on XRP. Don't make me buff again, bro. <laughs> I took everything I had, and uh, and I'm going to buy it up. Yuck. Yuck. Hmm. Well, Yuck. maybe here, the final thing I got for today, maybe this will make you feel a little better. Uh, next time you're looking at that price going up, it might not be real. We've discussed this before, but now we're starting to see more coverage of it in the mainstream crypto media, if you want to call it that. Um, yeah. Telling the truth, how crypto data aggregators fight fake exchange volumes. So, uh, really, this is a discussion here. I'm not going to read the article uh, because it's just a bunch of speculation. But um, it, it, the problem is worth discussing, and it's an interesting one, especially now the crypto is going to get increased attention, more people watching, more people looking. And one of the first things they're going to say is, I go to CoinMarketCap, I see all this, these numbers. Are these numbers real? And I have long believed that a lot of those numbers are not real. As 
I know you have as well. Uh, wash trading is something that has plagued the industry for a long time. And it seems, according to this article, as if at least some of the um, exchanges are willing to work on ways to ease out of that without admitting so much that they had been doing it. So Coin Market Cap has started a group. Uh, they got the the name in here. I did read this earlier. Uh, I haven't heard about this. Yeah, no, they, they uh, data accountability and transparency alliance. That's Coin Market Cap uh, has launched that. And oh, oh, hang on a second, bro. Hang on. Hmm. Binance owns Coin Market Cap, and they're coming out with this shit. Yeah. Uh, Conflict it, of interest right there. I think they're a member. Uh, so uh, what the idea is, is they'll work with some of these exchanges and they're going to say, how can we be more ethical in our reporting of, uh, and as you mentioned, uh, Binance owns coin market cap. So the answer they come back is, but we can't. We can't be more ethical in our reporting. That threatens our business model. And so go fuck yourself. But at least the rest of us know that. Uh, I would say don't ever trust those volume numbers. If you see them coming off an exchange, don't make your decision based on that um if we know that wash trading plagues the industry then you can take a pretty safe guess that it's probably worse than you specifically know and in this case i can tell you you're most likely right um yeah the, the looking at the price is a lot more meaningful because that's what you can go in and trade it in for um not uh not volume or anything else uh it is unfortunate that these things have not been more aggressively addressed we had two years of downtime to clean this up a little bit and i don't i don't see that much has been done and now we're in prime time again and we have this kitty corner shit with these aggregators having to deal with um uh you know false data and they're trying to present the view to users that's helpful uh and, and they can't do that if the data that they're receiving from an api from an exchange is bogus and it's just all wash trading and you see some assets that you know are not trading in those volumes you just you know that they're not and they claim that they yeah. are uh, and so i remember there was a cryptocurrency company a brand which i will not name i was in a talk with them a few months ago and during this conversation they were looking for an exchange to list on and they found one exchange, not that they wanted to list there, but they found an exchange on their search where they had listed an absolute shit coin and it was number one trading volume in the world. And this exchange was unknown to everybody. But all of a sudden for about a 12 hour period, it had the highest volume with a shit coin and then it disappeared again. Hmm. So the problem with that is people, some people will see that and think, oh my God, I'm going to miss the boat. I better get in on this shit now. Yep. And again, that was an unknown exchange. I don't even know if that exchange still exists. It could have been one of those exchanges that pop up, take people's deposit monies, they can't withdraw anything and they just shut down and disappear. Mm -hmm. One of those. So that's the problem with the topic that you, you've brought up here tonight. Well, it's a problem with centralized exchanges in general. Um... And, uh, you know, I wish I could be more generous, but I cannot. Uh, every, every group, so here we have the cryptosphere. Every group, it seems, in the world, any group of people that you want to single out has their greedy bastards. And, and, you know, and sometimes people are within their rights that could still be greedy. In this case, it's not so clear they're in their rights because that's fraud. Um, but in any case... A lot of the people that run centralized exchanges have been the greedy bastards of the crypto industry. Oh, yeah. And these are the ones bringing regulators down on our heads. These are the ones getting us negative attention. And these are the ones keeping people away. Um, if you need a villain, uh, you really don't, you don't need to look further than many of the, the centralized crypto exchanges. Now, why do people use them? They use them because there's only, is it, do you go with this crooked bastard or you go with that crooked bastard? There haven't been many more choices than that. And it's unfortunate. And I think it's something that has not been adequately addressed inside the industry. People kiss the asses of these fucking exchanges. And they're, oh, you guys are so great. No, they're not fucking great. They're a bunch of greedy fucking liars is what they are. Um, so until we move past that, and the answer you know I like is the centralized exchanges where there are no greedy bastards in charge, and it's simply run on a contract, or it's run by something that is removed from the inherent corruption of people. Okay, because people, corruption always finds people. And I don't know why people think cryptocurrency should be any exception 
you, you go and, you, and you, you mingle with these people at your fucking conventions. I don't go to conventions because I don't, I don't go out for that bullshit, okay? You mingle with these people when you know full well what they're doing. Uh, and you really ought to stop if, that, if you're one of the people that's doing that because these are the villains of our industry. The villains. Definitely. I've, I've always said this as well. 100%. Rob, I just got an ink. I just got an email from our engineer Roland with one last joke. I think he's. Re- I think he might have just redeemed himself this time. I doubt that. But go ahead. Uh, what did what did one what did one lesbian vampire say to the other lesbian vampire? I don't know what. I'll see you next month. Hmm. 2021, folks, is it living up to your expectations yet? It, it, I'm already disappointed. Uh, we're flat out of time for our first show of the year. Uh, thank you, Roland, for uh, finishing out our show on, on that note. Uh, just to remind people that uh, nothing really has changed. And uh, this is still the same old crypto degenerates. Uh, just a new year with a new number. Still going to be a bunch of bullshit. The good mixed in with the bad. This is what we call life. It's not all going to be rosy people, but it's also not all going to be safe. Get used to it because you'll be much happier and you will avoid shitting on other people's parades a lot more Uh, because isn't that one of the worst things that you can do in this life is shitting on somebody else trying to have a parade throwing shit at a parade is one of the most antisocial things that people can do and metaphorically people do it all the time uh, because they're jealous because they're scared all of these different reasons uh just knock it off Uh, just knock it off stop it and 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 while you guys think about rob's words also, please subscribe, like, share, and retweet this video. Smash that notification bell so you stay up to date with all future streams. Share yeah. it on Facebook, share it on Twitter, share it on Instagram, share it on porn sites, share it everywhere. Everywhere you can think of. And I right, Rob? Yes, yes. And if, if you uh, own a business and you have employees, share it with your employees. In fact, you may wish to consider uh, making it mandatory. You can test your employees when they come in on a, on a Thursday uh, and see if they've watched the show. Give them a, a short 10 question yeah. quiz uh, yeah. covering the content that we covered. Yeah, I think that would be a good thing to do. Uh, a yeah. Team building, I think they call it, Darko. And uh, yeah. uh, morale booster. And all they got to do... All they got to do, morale boost, and all they got to do is make it a work requirement. You must watch and share this video with at least three different social medias or three different people that yeah. you know of. Or you're fired. That's simple. Or you're fired. Yeah. yeah. And we will test you tomorrow with 10 questions to see if you really did watch a show. Right. I like that. Yeah. And if you fail, get out. That's it. Yeah. Get out. No discussion. I like it. No improvement plan. Just get the fuck out. There's the door. What don't you see? Get out. Go. I love it. Okay, people. I love it. That's it for us. Uh, join us again next week for another exciting episode of Crypto Degenerates. We're here to keep you company on the long road down into hell. Have a good one. Take care of yourself. Be safe. Love somebody. Give somebody a hug today. I think they need it. Good night. Well, there's only one thing to say. It's the most unusual, most unusual, most unusual. Cut.